it. What's up YouTube? Midjourney version 5 was just released on March 16th and I'm going to show you why Midjourney version 5 is making history again. Let's take a look at the differences between version 4 and version 5, things it brought back, things that it fixed with the previous versions, and also things that it fixed with AI art as a whole. It's pretty crazy. And also, let's take a look at how you can get started using version 5 today. Before we get started, I feel inclined to tell you that the Midjourney is not free. So if you're new to Midjourney, you actually have to pay a sub fee. And you can check my video description if you want more info info on that. But if you already know what Midjourney is, let's continue. The first and most notable change with Midjourney version 5 is that it allows you to work with a greater range of styles and it allows you to break away from the default Midjourney art style, which was beautiful, but it, it might not have been what you were aiming for. And the default style is now photorealistic. The new version lets you get away from prompting just keywords and version 5 can now understand natural language a bit better. And it has the ability to understand nuance, which provides us a better coherency when it comes to longer prompts and allows you to control of the finer details. So it seems it's more geared towards people who just want to talk to Midjourney and actually get something beautiful. It's going to be interesting to see how this affects the way we create prompts. I still see everyone using keywords, but we'll see in the future. Having said that, Midjourney version 5 now comes with greater precision and it might actually help you rather than hurt you to have long as hell prompts. We'll see because some people are just copy and pasting multiple prompts together. If you have conflicting ideas in a prompt, uh, I don't think that's going to help. But if you're trying to get very specific, it will help. You also now get a pass when you start using natural language instead of doing all keywords. So as long as it's something a human can understand, so gibberish doesn't apply. <laughs> Although version 5 allows you to write really long prompts and still understand you, there's no crime in making a short prompt. It won't give you exactly what you're looking for and it'll be a little bit more generic, but it'll still give you a nice picture. It is still mid-journey after all, right? But you'll have that classic mid-journey style. You don't know what I'm talking about. One with a thing and that thing and the thing that, that with that type of painting and yep one thing you're going to notice with version 5 is that photorealism got a uh, boost by like a thousand so it's not just the fact that it can create better photorealism hyperrealism or whatever you want to call it but you don't have to put all those extra things to make it photorealistic because before you had to specify the lens and everything and to try and get it to be photorealistic as possible but now if you take a look at this prompt right here of Keanu Reeves it actually just Kind of they just kind of put the prompt in and it worked so you couldn't do that in version 4 you would have to put a lot of things about the type of photo it is the type of shot the type of lens and you really had to do extra stuff to get it to be photorealistic and when you get really close into the model's face you can tell that it looks like a photo it's not like there's any like painting style and we'll compare version 4 and version 5 in a second but take a look at it and this goes without saying that i think they brought back the use of celebrities uh by accident and uh, i don't think they did it on purpose since all of the ai art generators are kind of going in the same direction which is the direction opposite direction of getting sued but uh check it out that's keanu reeves that looks just like him i'm thinking i'm back by default you're going to see a lot more photorealism so you won't even have to do anything to try and get that picture but if you want to type an artist's name or a painting medium like oil painting or a type of painting like impasto painting style then you can get those artistic results again that you want if that's what you're going for which is pretty much like the opposite of version 4 you usually had to describe with the photo as a photo you know you had to put the lens and stuff to get something photorealistic and you had to put hyper realism you had to change the lighting and everything to get a photorealistic picture but now it's the other way around now you got to actually put artsy stuff like the painting painting medium and all that kind of stuff to get a painting or so it seems keep in mind i mean version 5 just came out so i don't, I don't have like extensive testing but in the reddits that's pretty much what's being reported as of now something that will become increasingly more important in version 5 is camera lens type which was already important in version 4 but it you know in version 4 it kind of seemed like sometimes it listened sometimes it didn't sometimes it made it a painting even though you asked for type of lens but in version 5 it can dramatically change the picture i'm probably going to make a full video on different lens types the focal lengths and how it can affect your image another thing you're going to notice right away with version 5 is that it fixed hands <laughs> And this is crazy because AI art has had a problem with hands and I'm talking about all AI art and like I just did a video on stable diffusion control net how to fix hands because it's such a big thing like hands are always messed up 
But now version five seems to have fixed that. And like most of your pictures, more than not, will actually have decent hands like this one you're looking at right now. It's also fixed teeth. So they'll be the appropriate size and you won't have like those kind of double teeth or kind of weird stuff going on. This is pretty huge because this is something that's been plaguing AI art for a long time. And it's something that we thought like would just never get fixed. And the other guys aren't even close. I mean, Stable Diffusion does have control net to fix hands, but it does not generate pretty hands. There's just no way. Better catch up, Stable the fusion Alrighty then. here's another cool picture of john wick or keanu reeves and it does seem that they're indirectly by accident brought back celebrities pretty sure they didn't mean to but uh they're probably gonna see some of this and try and zap it i hope not it's kind of cool to at least have the likeness of celebrities i don't think i'm the only one that noticed that celebrities are back and here's some examples of some other celebrities one's cara delvin here's one of walter white that looks just like him Here's a picture of Leonardo DiCaprio. Got a pencil drawing of Elvis. It came out pretty good. Picture of Saul from Better Call Saul. And then my personal favorite, which is Kermit the Frog as a pimp. And there seems to be a lot of these going on right now. So here, just slightly up, there's another one. And yeah, there's a lot of Kermit the Frogs right now. I guess quite the meme, but you know, that's none of my business. I thought this picture in particular was pretty hilarious. He put a uh, alligator with a vest it's an investigator <laughs> it's, it's like a dad joke and, but it's so stupid i love it let's take a look at some of these photorealistic pictures before i go any further and check out the detail on this picture everything about it i mean this shininess on his head the poor detail the the way the hair comes out of his head the little like flyaway hairs it, it is it's pretty amazing and i didn't think it could get any better and Look at this. And there's just a lot of examples like this, which is super close up detail. Everything's just so realistic. So one of the big themes in version five is definitely photorealism. Here's another photorealistic picture of Gandalf and that looks great. I mean, I can't even tell what this one, I could, there's a little bit there. I can see that this is AI art, but uh, look at his hands, perfect. And here's another photorealistic picture, which <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't know who thinks of this stuff, but uh, uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty entertaining. What is that in her hand? Is that like a measuring tape or part of one? I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on in this picture. Oh, Joe Biden sniffing an anime girl. Okay, I get it. He likes to sniff hair. Well, here we are again. This body is quite different. Anyways, this is the part of the video where I ask you to click the thumbs up button if you like the video. It's the one that looks like a thumbs up. For some reason, I feel a bit odd. Another thing to notice in version 5 is that there's a lot more detail. So normally in version 4, you would have like flowers around your hair. This one has a whole bouquet with a bunch of interesting things like a little baby deer sticking out whatever that is and different types of flowers and you'll see this throughout the different examples on version 5 right now you'll see a lot of extra details that you didn't see before and here's another picture of that extreme detail that you get with is a steampunk photorealistic shot here the eyes look amazing picture is very photorealistic the the strands of hair everything's in the right place this looks crazy i'm not sure what's going on with her lips but whatever so you will definitely notice that the photorealism and the detail is insane now, next level. And more importantly, it's easier to achieve. Another thing that was fixed, or well, I won't say fixed, perhaps you got a better chance at it now, is characters holding stuff, like holding a sword, holding a gun. I, I tried holding a bow, but that's still kind of impossible. Actually, check out this picture I made of Laura Croft holding a bow, and there's this weird hand coming out of a funny place here. So it still has problems with that, but it's a little bit better. It's actually possible now. It's not, it's not impossible, but it's hard to do. Another thing that you'll notice is that it's better at creating guns and cameras now and smaller objects that have finer details. Although sometimes the scope and lens is backwards, but whatever. One thing you're going to notice immediately, it takes slightly longer to create the photo, but that it's already upscaled when it's done. So when you click on U1, U2 or whatever, so I'm going to click on U1, it just appears immediately. So there it is. So it's not even a second it popped up. So here's another one. I'll click on U2 and there it is immediate prompting words is still broken but there is a way you can actually get specific words but it's a pain in the butt and you, you can also get the individual letter but it's sometimes some letters like t for for some reason t doesn't want to print out i actually put a typography tutorial in my description it's not a video it's a it's a site i did a quick rundown on it how to get each individual letter so you can get something which you're seeing on the screen here so you have a pretty letter and then you can rip that out remove the background and throw it onto your ai art or flyer or whatever you want and you 
could have some pretty letters. Let's take a look at some of the things that version 5 brought back. And one of the first ones they brought back was the tile command. If you didn't know, you can put dash dash tile and you can get a tile of whatever picture that you want. I guess this is their new tile pattern and it's not like a symmetrical kind of square, a little square for each flower with the same flower. It's kind of seamlessly tiling flowers into an image or whatever your prompt was. I actually tried to do Nicolas Cage's face on a Hawaiian shirt and uh, it didn't come out too well if you can see on the screen. But uh, I would have totally made that shirt and wore it outside. <laughs> Another thing that version 5 brought back that was gone for a long time is the stylize command or dash dash stylize dash dash s. And then you could put whatever number you have and the default is 100 but you can go from 0 to 1000. If you remember back in the days with version 3 you can actually go from 625 to 60,000 which is insane. One thing I'd like to point out too is that Midjourney has updated their manual this time and so no longer is it like that six months later they update their manual. It's actually been updated already and has version 5 information in there. You can get to the new Midjourney manual by going to the Midjourney homepage and then clicking on help and FAQ. This link right here. Then click on the quick start guide and you're in the new manual. This is updated with version 5 stuff. So I don't know if you're familiar, but it took them a while to update version 4. I don't think it happened until like, you know, a couple weeks ago. So it's cool that they updated it like as soon as possible for version 5 stuff. One thing you want to check in the new manual that they brought back was the image weight. So image weight was dash dash IW. Then you can go from 0.05 to 2 now. It used to be like 1 to 5, but now for version 5, it's going to be 0.5 to 2. And by default, it's going to be at 1. So what image weights did is if you put a link from your URL or if you added a picture as a reference, it would actually determine the weight that picture would have on the overall output of your prompt. So it's basically comparing the prompt that you put in in words versus the reference picture. How much do you really want to reference that picture? Do you want it on a one to one or do you want to double that scale? Or is it not that important and you would put it at a 0.5 value? Another really cool addition with version 5 is these custom aspect ratios to extremes. So you can now put like something like 10 to 1 or 1 to 10 instead of just, you know, 2 by 3. I know version 4 kind of give you a little bit more freedom, but with version 5, you can do some insane things. And this is perfect for 360 themed pictures where you can do some VR with this and throw it into Blender, make a movie out of it, or put it into an entire game world, which is insane. You're going to see a lot more of this, and I think it's going to have a bigger part to play. With these custom aspect ratios, you can do some neat things with it. Banners, you can actually, you can create the world's tallest burger or something like that. Or you can make your own custom waifu billboard. So you can make like a six foot tall picture that you could print out, you know, you can just blow it up and then just, I mean, not blow it up, I mean, literally, but you know what I mean? Like I said, these extremely wide aspect ratios can allow you to do some things with VR, which is going to be very interesting. And I'm going to start trying to put these pictures into something, some VR app and make some videos about that. Now that you know what Midjourney has to offer, what it brought back, what it fixed and what it can do now. Next is how to use it. First way to do it is just to type dash dash V5 at the end of your prompt and then press enter, or you can type slash settings and press enter twice. Then you get into the settings menu and then you can click on mid journey version 5. Once you do this, every prompt that you make will have version 5 at the end of it. And if you want to get real pro, you can actually use a prefer option set for testing. You can type in slash prefer option set, then press tab, give it a name like hyper, press tab again twice or three times and give it a custom value at the end. So I gave it the value of professional color grading, soft shadows, no contrast, clean, sharp focus and film photography. So now when I press enter and I put hyper at the end of a prompt, so I can put my unicorn prompt here. I could simply type in dash dash hyper at the end and it's going to automatically throw in all those things I saved in my prompt. Check it out. As you can see, just by typing dash dash hyper, I got the whole professional color grading, soft shadows, no contrast, clean, sharp focus, film photography. So that's a neat trick, especially when you're testing stuff on new versions. And if you forget what those are, those prompts are, you can type in slash prefer, then choose option list here and press enter. And then you'll be able to see all your current prefer option sets with the words that it'll give you. Now you can see the difference from this picture and then this picture where I typed in dash dash hyper, which is where I created my prefer option set to make things photorealistic. And it's much different 
as you can tell. That's a good way to grab a certain style that you either found on the community or just something that you use normally. Well, that's version five in a nutshell, and it's pretty game changing. The ability to prompt with natural language and get that photorealistic image without being a mid journey prompt guru opens this up to a lot more people. And with mid journey finally fixing hands to some extent, I think people are going to start using this to make money with stock art and just a lot of other uses for it. And also with the photorealistic people now, it's like you can't even tell if they're real or if they're AI art. So I can't and I and I do this stuff all the time. So it's, it's really crazy. The only people who can really tell now are photographers at the top of their game who understand shadows and lighting and all that stuff. One of the sleepers that I think people don't understand the value is the white aspect ratio. So this is there's a lot of uses for this. Businesses can use it for banners. You can actually do it to make stand up posters. You can actually use it for your YouTube banner, which I'm going to do because it has such a weird aspect ratio. But now you can just create the whole thing in mid journey in one shot. And it's literally game changing. Think about it. You can actually create the entire background for a 2D video game, one straight shot without any gaps. So that's pretty cool. You can do that. But that's all I had. And uh, if you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up button. And I hope to see you in my next video.